Hey everyone, this is Glenn from astrobloke.co.uk. I'm back on APP and what I wanted to show you today was how to stack and calibrate data from different uh, cameras or telescopes, whatever equipment you've uh, changed. Um, this is really useful um, should you have taken some good data of a target and then at a later date you've bought a new camera, you've bought a new telescope and you've taken some more data. Um, APP's got an excellent ability to put the data together as one as one file so you can actually add to the data you've already got even though you may have taken it with a different focal length. What I've got here is I've got three sessions or three nights where I photographed uh, NGC 1333, the embryo nebula. Um, found it quite a hard target to photograph. It's very faint and it's, uh, I used my Richie Kretchen 8 inch RC8 um, for two nights. And on one of those nights I binned two times two. And uh, on the last night I photographed it, I used my Skywatcher 130 PDS. So the RC8 with the uh, re reducer that I use in it and flattener is uh, 1155 millimeters, and the 130 PDS is 650 millimeters, so they're quite different. So um, we're going to put the files into this folder where all the other files are. So we'll just go over to the left here. Uh, oops, didn't want to push that button. Okay, so we're just gonna, my bad pattern for my camera is RGGB. We've got adaptive area disc, which is fine. Okay, load. Now we haven't got uh, multi-channel filter processing, but what we have got is multi-session processing. Um, and what APP allows you to do is actually put together five different sessions. So what we'll do is we'll call this multi session embryo interesting name okay so it doesn't matter how you add the files whether you want to add all the lights and then add all the darts and all the flats etc etc or you can add each session at a time what I'll do is I'll do it that way and but you can do it any way you like it it allows you to do it in any order at all so this is the uh, 130 PDS, so this will be session one. So I highlight my lights and it'll ask me what session I want it to go in. I'm going to have session one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay with session one and I'm going to add the calibration frames. I've got all the calibration frames here, but I've run them before, so I've actually got masters. So I've got a master flat, which is going to go in session one. I can click dark, I've got a master dark. That's going to go in session one. And you'll notice that because their masters is actually going down into the bottom section where the masters are, it knows that their masters are not all the individual files. So even though I click the top box, it's fine with that. Oops, let's double click that. And that's session one. So that's session one done. I'm going to go back to light and I'm going to go to my RC8 file and I've got the 9th of October and the 21st of September. One's two times two bin and one's normal. So we'll do the 9th of October. This is the binned one. Okay, uh, we've got quite a lot of lights on this one. So we'll open them. This is gonna be session two. And then we're gonna add the flats for session two. And that again is a master flat. Session two. And then we're going to add the darks. Ask the darks. That's session two. And dark flats. And obviously you might be using bias here, depending on what camera you're using. With my 183C tech, it needs dark flats. It doesn't like bias. But my uh, Canon EOS 70D likes bias. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to look at... 21st of September back here and we're going to highlight the lights for that night and this is going to be session three and then again you're going to put in the master flat session three 
Master Dark. So it is quite straightforward how to add all the details. Just take your time with it. Um, obviously, the more you do it, the better you get at it. But um, try and be methodical so you know that you're putting the right data into the right session. That's why I, I kind of do the lights and the calibration frames for each session at a time. So I've got three master flats, three master darks, three master dark flats, and 109 lights. Bad pixel map. I do have bad pixel map, so we'll uh, put one of them in. If you haven't got one, it doesn't matter. Um, APP will make one for you. Okay. On the calibration side, we'll uh, just leave everything there as default. Uh, analyze stars, that's fine. Registration. We are not using the same camera and optics, so we need to untick this box. Okay. Um, let's have a look down here. Everything else is, is fine. Um, we go to normalize. Now under normalize, you've got a mode here, regular or advanced. If you hang over the box, it tells you what you need to know. It says if all the light frames are of the same scale, image scale, and have nearly identical field of view, choose regular mode, otherwise choose advanced. So we are gonna need advanced because they're not of the same field of view. Okay, that's everything there's fine. And then we've got integrate. So we're gonna integrate. Now we can integrate per session, integrate per session and all, or integrate them all. I'm gonna integrate them all, so I want them all together. I've got 109 lights. There's bound to be some, you know, poor ones in there. So, because I'm not going to flick through them all, so I'm going to just take this down to 100 lights and let that, let that put in 100 of them. So it's going to be 92%. So it'll do that uh, under quality. Okay, let's just have a look down here. Everything looks okay. So we're all happy with that. So I'm going to integrate this and then hopefully come back and we'll see what we get. While APP is crunching through the numbers, um, I wanted to show you one of the single sessions. As you can see, the target is very faint. There's not much detail there. And hopefully, one of the three sessions together, we should get a lot more detail. So, uh, fingers crossed. Okay, so the integration has finished, and uh, yeah, you can see what we've got here. Let's uh, go to the tools, batch modifier, we'll just crop this out a bit. Uh, actually, I think I will give that a little rotate first because I'm going to have trouble cropping that uh, dark edge here otherwise. Let's um, cancel that. Batch rotate, yep. Okay, we're going to be batch rotating anti clockwise. Uh, I don't know, it was 20. So you've got a little show button here, so without actually data, you can rotate it and see. There we go, it's obviously quite a big file. See where it's going to. Oh, I've rotated that way too, way too much. So let's test maybe 12, let's have a look at that, show. We've got a bit of a line here. I could have used multi-band blending, it mostly would have lost that. Um, but, we should hopefully be able to uh, play about with the calibration a bit and get, get that looking right. Okay, so. We can batch modify now and we can have a look at a crop that will give us most of the detail. Let's have a look at that. Okay, 
So this is the target. I'm actually going to rotate it again because I do feel it should be the other way up. So I'm going to give that 180 degrees. Okay. I'm just going to, I feel that the crop I've got needs to just come down a bit. It looks a bit imbalanced with the gap at the top there. Maybe get away with that. Okay, and there's the, uh, the image from the three sessions. Let's have a look now at, we'll just give a The background a light removal we'll just get a nice spread of boxes to analyze nice thing about this target is it's so deep space and in an area where there's not many stars at all so there's no problem getting your boxes not hit a star Makes life a bit easier. Right, calculate. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Got some nice detail in the clouds up here, which is quite good. Um, okay, and save. And then what we can do now, so that's calibrated the background. We're going to now look at star colours. And this. This area here, this clouded area here, is normally very blue in colour. Um, very similar to like the Iris Nebula, which is a um, reflection nebula. Let's have a look. If we just calculate that, there's not going to be many stars to look at. Most of them are red. And there we go. That's more like the colour I would have expected it to be. Okay, so there is an integration of um, three nights, different size scopes, it just puts it all together as one image, it does a really good job. What I would do now is save this as a 16-bit <clears throat> TIFF and do some further little tweaks and a bit of noise reduction in um, Photoshop. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I hope this has been of uh, some help for you. Uh, as I say, it lets you know that any um, data that you've got from uh, other equipment, you can mix with new equipment or different equipment, and uh, APP does a great job at it. Uh, anyway, thank you very much.